time I had the opportunity to share the word of God. I was so honored that Legina asked me to come and share for the kickoff for her new ministry. Um, and I asked her, I always like to be in order. And so I said, what is it that you would like me to, to talk about? And so I'm going to be in order. And I'm going to talk about what she asked me to talk about today. But before I go into that, um, I would like to pray. I know she already prayed, but I want to pray. Um, so if you all would just close your eyes with me. God, we thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for all that you have done in it. I thank you, Lord God, for getting us through this week. I thank you for getting us here safely. I thank you right now for opening up hearts, oh God, and opening up ears to hear a word from you, not a word from me. And so I pray, Heavenly Father, that as I go through my notes and as I go through your scripture, Lord God, that I would be humble enough, Lord, to change directions if you have me to change direction. Lord God, that you would show me when to say or speak and when not to. Father, and I thank you, Lord God, that it will penetrate the hearts of your daughters right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that we're able to leave everything from this earth on the outside, Lord God. Anything that's been weighing us down, we left it at the doors because right now it's all about you. Right now we just want to hear what are you saying to us through this word. We want to find out how are you trying to connect to us through this word. And so we thank you, Lord, for just an opportunity to get close to you, an opportunity to fellowship with you and to fellowship with one another. We just thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. I thank you for being a vessel used for your glory. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, Legina said, I would really like it if you would talk about growing in our relationship with God, growing in our faith and what it means to study the word of God and why that's important. And so I'm gonna mix all of that in here today. I'm gonna mix all of it. I got all of it. I got a few pages of notes and I plan to get through all of them and I'm gonna be timely. And so as I was thinking about that, the words stood out to me, growing, studying, and confidence. So I'm gonna hit on each one of those words. How do we grow, how do we study, and how do we become confident in God's word and who God called us to be? Because I believe as we try to navigate through this life, all of those things are really important. And so I thought, I didn't know who my audience was gonna be today, but I said, Lord, you know. And so I'm gonna go ahead and write this out like I know, right? Okay. And so as I was writing my notes, I said, Lord, the audience probably far removed from school. Is anybody in the room in school? No, okay, I didn't think so. <laughs> so I said, okay, Lord, everybody in the audience, they probably far removed from school. So, but we all can relate to being in school, right? And so I thought about myself when I was in school. Now, math was never really my thing. You know, I really hated college <laughs> algebra. I hated all of the finance classes that I had to take, but it was a part of the curriculum. You had to actually take it to graduate with a business degree, which is what I have. So I said, okay, Lord, if I'm gonna make it through this thing, right, I'm gonna have to study a little bit. And I will be honest and say, they didn't prepare me in high school, okay? Because if I look back in high school and I'm not gonna put no shame on my alma mater, right? I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna put no shame on the high school that I went to, so I'm not gonna say their name today. But what I'm just trying to say is they did not prepare me for college, all right? right. And so because they did not prepare me for college, I think studying was a little different in college than what it should be than what it was in high school, you know what I'm saying? So, so we didn't study, we got passed in classes. I mean, I made A's and B's in Spanish, and I don't even really know how to say a full sentence is what I'm trying to tell y'all. So I didn't have to study in high school. But when I got to college, oh, it's so different. Because they don't care about how nice you smile. They don't care how often you show up to class. What they care about is whether or not you know the subject. They really want to know, have you studied? And the way that they're going to find out whether or not you study is they're going to test you. And every single time I was presented with a test, especially math, the only way I passed is if I studied. If I connected with some people who also knew the subject. If I went to a tutor or I found other people that could help me in the things that I didn't understand. But almost every single time I did good on one of those tests, I can tell you it was because I studied and I put in the effort that was required to do well. Mm -hmm. 
And so I thought about that and I said, okay, well that's school. So maybe, you know, maybe we're too far removed from school, but how about work? So let me bring that to the present. And so if you think about yourself at work, every time they present a new project or they present a new software, or they tell you there's something different that they want you to do on your job, the reality is you have to study a little bit so that you know how to understand and move and navigate through this system. So that you know how to be able to, if you're in leadership, teach somebody else. If you are a presenter, which I do many times on my job, the only way that I go forward and confidently speak is if I've studied. If I know exactly what I'm talking about. And you can always tell a presenter who's never studied, oh, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So they're going to pull up the projection, right? And the slide's going to be up there. But they're going to be reading everything on the slide, right? It ain't, they're not going from the slide at all because they have not studied. Yeah. It is very clear right. when someone studied versus someone who isn't, right? So the person who studied the notes a little bit, they're going to walk away from the screen. They're going to come to the tables. They're going to kind of mingle with you a little bit. But that person who hasn't studied, they're nervous, right? They're not really prepared for your questions. They really can't say anything extra. All they can do is go off of what is right here in front of them. So it's something so important about studying. If you want to show up in this world confidently, if you want to show up in this world boldly, if we want to show up who God created us to be, there's something so important about studying. So I'm going to start in the scripture, and today we're in 2 Timothy. And I want to read this, and I'm in the New King James Version, but 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says this. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's 2 Timothy 2 and 15. That's New King James Version, but I read it in the Amplified Version, and I really like the way the Amplified Version says it. The Amplified Version says this, study to do your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial, who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of God. It's something different between how you compare the two texts, but I really love this one because it says a workman tested by trial who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of God. Yes, we go through this life and there is some stuff just for us, but there is also some things that God expects us to do and show up for other people. And when we are teaching the word of God, it's not necessarily through our spoken word, but it is how we live this life and how we show up through being tested by trials. It is how we show up when we are experiencing different things. And so here the scripture says, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, tested by trial. Now, if you think about it, just for a second, I don't know where you are in your relationship with God. We're going to talk about relationship in just a little bit. But regardless of where you are in your relationship with God, we can all say we've been through some trials. We can all say that there are moments when I don't feel real good about where I am in life. There are times when I don't feel real good about where I am in my finances. There are times when I don't feel real good about where I am with God. And so when I don't feel real good about certain areas of my life, it's going to begin to show up in different areas of my life. But based on how I respond to the test is basically how I study. Now here's one thing about studying that I always remember. I could study for a test that I'm taking in the first part of the semester. But if I never revisit the content, if they give it to me on the final exam, I won't be able to answer those same questions. Yeah. So the value is that I can't just study one time. I gotta keep going back and revisiting that thing. And when there's ever a test and it keeps being presented to me time and time again, God is saying, then you gotta go back and you gotta go revisit the content because you're not gonna be able to pass this test based on old study habits. You gotta figure out where are you in this season? See, the way that I learn as my 37 year old self is not the same way that I learn as my 25 year old self. Yeah. It takes me a little bit more time. See, when I was studying when I was 25, I could study in the library and there could be people all around me and I could still retain the information. I 
could go and have a side conversation and come back to the content. But I don't know about anybody else. Right now, I need to be in an isolated place. I need to cut off the noise. I need to get away from people. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I need to get away from things that are trying to distract me and get me off course. Something about when we were younger, where we could do things that we can't do now because life's harder now. When I was in college, I didn't have the same trials that I have as a 37-year-old. I wasn't trying to conquer the same giants that I'm trying to conquer now as a 37-year-old. When I was 25, I was just trying to figure out who I want to be in life. Now, I know it's about who God wants me to be in life. So the, the attacks are different. All right? And so that means that I got to study differently. Yeah. The way that I look at the word can't be the way that I looked at the word when I was an infant in my faith. Yeah. And I was really just trying to figure out what did God say about me. Yeah. Now at 37, I'm not just trying to figure out what God says about me. I'm trying to debate and swat away what the enemy says about me. Yeah. I'm trying to debate and swat away the attacks that come in my own mind against my own self. Those are the things that I'm swatting away and debating. And so now, the way that I study the word is different. Yeah. So I have to figure out what season am I in in life and study accordingly. A workman who is tested by trial, who need not be ashamed. That means that when I go out to battle, I sharpen my sword every time I go out to battle. See, I couldn't go out and kill those giants and prepare for battle on the same sword. I had to go back and prepare for the new army that's coming against me. And as we know, we are children of God. Yeah. Everyone here, you said, sister, earlier, that you knew you needed to be here today. And I also knew it because I prayed to God that whoever was supposed to be here to hear this word would be here today. And so as you're here today, there is something specific that God wanted you to hear. But something is beautiful about knowing God's voice and being able to say, I know where I'm supposed to be because God is something unsettled in my spirit. It's something else I could be doing right now, but I chose to drive here. I chose to be a part of Esther's sisterhood tonight because I knew that there was something special that God had for me. So as we go forward in the scripture, it says this in verse 19. Nevertheless. The solid foundation of God's stands, having the seal, the Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Mm -hmm. There is a calling and a requirement on us if God knows us by name. Yeah. And I will say that God knows you by name. Yeah. There is something that is required of us if we call ourselves children of God. But here's the thing, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. So what do you need in the scripture? You don't just study the word because you need to know what God says about blessing. You study the word because you need to understand who's been through the trial I'm going through. Yeah. You need to study the word so you can understand the account of somebody else who's witnessed and experienced life in the same way that you have. What am I saying to you? I'm saying someone who's struggled in their faith. I'm saying someone who has had everything stripped away from them and still has to find hope. I'm saying to you, someone who's been in the scripture, who has been barren, who has been without love, who has been without healing. I'm saying you've got to look in the scripture and say, Lord, where is the account of someone that I can relate to? To know how do I deal with this test and this trial? I'm not just studying for the blessing. I'm studying so I can get through the test. When I get through the test, then the blessing is realized. Mm -hmm. But I need to be able to get through the test. I just need enough hope. I just need enough strength to be able to move to wherever it is that you have next for me. So studying, the importance of studying. It is a season in the time that the word is going to be more relevant than others. Mm -hmm. There is a season in a time when God will reveal the same scripture to you in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because God understands that these workmen will be tested by trial. Mm -hmm. And there is something that he wants for you to understand so you can pass the test. All right. So when I thought about that, the more we study, the more confident we are. Yeah. Right. You began to speak to your situation and you began to say what God says about this situation. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't say it out loud, you say it in your mind. You start to rebuke the thoughts that are not godly yeah. 
the things that are not loving, the things that are not pure, the things that are not praiseworthy, the things that are not of good report, you rebuke those things and you begin to say confidently, thus says the Lord about this situation. I know it looks like certain things are going to happen, but thus says the Lord, he has promised me, his word shall not return until him void. I know that everything that he's spoken, it shall come to pass, thus says the Lord. And so you can begin to speak those things over your situation. Do you know the outcome? No, God has said, I don't need you to know the outcome. I need you to trust that I know the outcome. And so I'm not telling you that you gotta see the end before you see the beginning all the time. I know it sounds real good, but sometimes you can't see many to minute. Sometimes you can't see month to month. Sometimes you're like, Lord, I just really want to get through this day. So no, it's not about seeing the end five years from now. It's like, Lord, help me to get through this day so that I can wake up and try again tomorrow. And so that is what God is saying. But confidently through studying, you can approach each day. You can approach each trial. You can approach each attack, right? And so there is something that comes confidently through reading, through learning, through studying, right? And so God is saying, I really want that for you. I really want you to understand that the closer that we are to God, it means that we don't only claim to know him, but he also knows us. Yeah. You know, there's something funny about when you look at people and they try to tell you how to pray. You know, you got to go pray a certain way. You got to talk to God a certain way. And a lot of people, especially new people in the word and in faith, begin to shy away from them. They won't pray in an open room or in a crowd, or they feel shame to pray, even if you're sitting down and have dinner. A lot of people have made them feel bad that their prayers aren't good enough, right? Because right? yeah. you don't have all these fancy words and you don't have all this um, posture or whatever it is that you're supposed to have. But there's something beautiful about knowing God and Him knowing you. Yeah. Yeah. So with Him knowing you, I'm talking about Him knowing you when you're at home and nobody else yeah. is looking. Yeah. I'm talking about when God knows you and there's no one else around. See, he knows you like to get in bed and, and read your Bible and fall asleep. You ain't okay. fooling nobody, right? Yeah. God is like, I know that you like to talk to me on the way to work when you're yes. in the car driving. Yes. I understand that when someone sent an email to you and it comes across your screen and you want to shout and scream, you're yes. like, Lord, look. Right? I need you to move, right? And God is like, I know all about that. I know all about that, and I know all about you, and that's good enough for me. Yeah. Right? Because there's something beautiful about God knowing you. That means that you can take your guard down. That means that you can show up to him vulnerably and naked. Before him, there has to be no facade in front of God. And so God is like, not only do I want you to know me, but I want to know you. Yeah. All right, and so I was thinking about that. And so when we talk about relationship, I want to go into relationship. It says this in the dictionary. When two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected or the stage of being connected, relationship is about our ability to connect to God. Wherever we are, regardless of whatever is going on, no matter who else is around us, connection. For those in the room who are married, your spouse enters in the room. There's a connection there. For those of you in the room who are mothers, or you even think about your parental relationship with your mother or father, there is a connection. When people who you love enter in a space that you're in, if it's a loving and healthy relationship, there is an unspoken connection. That's the beauty of relationship. Yeah. But Zeus says it this way, and I don't know if y'all heard of Zeus. It's a dating website, I believe. <laughs> but when I was searching, I said, you know, everybody online searching for love. Lord, we're searching for relationships. So Zeus said, let me put this out here. Let me tell you what we got to say about relationships. Okay. And Zeus says it this way, choosing to be on your partner's team, putting their needs before your own. Okay. When you're committed to someone, you consider them when making both big and small decisions. In a relationship, you work together and make room in your life for each other. I like that. I said, come on, Zeus. Are y'all giving me the love out here? I need to understand. So Zeus says, it's when you're committed to someone, you consider them when making big and small decisions. Yeah. All right? It says you have a relationship where you work together and you make room for them in your life. And I don't know anybody who's been struggling with time management. You've been struggling with how to prioritize. You've been struggling with how to balance. And so sometimes you look at the end of your day 
and you've made a lot of big decisions yeah. and you made a lot of small decisions, but you haven't made much room for God to consult him about what you're doing in your life. Mm -hmm. And so some of us can say, I know God. I've been knowing God. I've been, me and him been cool. We've been at this thing for a minute, right? But there's something about when you've been in a relationship with someone for a while, sometimes it grows a little stale. You know what I'm saying? And so you stop calling it first thing in the morning like you used to. You stop thinking about them in the middle of your day like you used to. You stop trying to figure out how you go talk to them before you go to bed. And I know that's got to be us with God sometimes. Sometimes we don't wake up and think about God as the first thing in our day. We immediately jump up and start doing all that life has thrown at us. Yeah. Whatever our responsibilities are, we immediately wake up and start moving towards those things. When we're in the middle of our day, so many challenges have been thrown at us. So many people have asked us for advice. So many things and opportunities have come up that really we should be consulting God for, but we just haven't found time for him in our day. Yeah. Yeah. So instead, you give people advice that you hadn't even prayed about. Instead, you make decisions that are big that you haven't asked God, what do you want me to do? You start thinking about, Lord, what is, you start thinking, Lord, can you just bless this what I already decided, right? I mean, really, we'd be like, Lord, it seems like a good opportunity to bless this, okay, thanks, right? And so you don't even really ask God. You don't spend time with God. You don't figure out, Lord, how can you be incorporated in all that I have going on? And I said before, prayer doesn't look a certain type of way. It's just simply, God, tell me what to do here. Yeah. It's simply, Lord, go before me when I walk in this meeting. Yeah. These are the ways that we interact and we respond. And I will say this, new love, I have new love, right? Less than two years. And I often say, lovey, what do you think about this? Lovey, this happened in my day. Lovey, I tell him everything. I know he don't care. But at the end of the day, I'm talking to him about everything. And God is always saying, and I ask God for conviction, when I don't talk to him the same way, I talk to my loving. Yeah. You know, when I don't talk to God about everything that's happening in my life and everything that I'm going through, sometimes when I want to call him first, I put my phone down and I say, Lord, forgive me because I haven't even talked to you. Yeah. It's not that God doesn't see. It's not that God doesn't know. He just wants to know that he is priority right. for us. Right? Yeah. And so God is like, where am I in your life? Yeah. What does our relationship say? Have you made room for me the way that you want me to make room for you, right? And so we get to know God by spending time with God. But I like to say it this way. We get to know God by reading his word and yeah. praying. Yeah. And it's going to be broken down by two words, by listening and by talking. Mm -hmm. We get to know God and our relationship grows with God when we listen and when we talk. The more we listen, the more we get clarity. The more we listen, the more we get direction on what it is that we're supposed to be doing in life and where we're supposed to be going. The more we listen to God, the more we find hope for whatever it is that we're desiring and whatever it is we're seeking from God. The more we listen, the more our faith grows. Listening by reading the word of God. Lord, what are you saying to me here? Lord God, what does this word mean in this season of my life? The more I listen, the more I find these things. But the more I talk, the more vulnerable I become. The more I talk, the more bolder I become. Think about relationships, friendships even. When you first start a friendship with someone, you kind of don't know what you can share, what you can say. You kind of on guard just a little bit because you're trying to fill them out. You're trying to be wise and have a little bit of discernment. But the more that relationships grow, the more that that relationship grows, you talk a little bit more, right? You become a little bit more vulnerable. You start sharing stuff and you start saying, now don't tell nobody, right? You just start telling your secrets to this individual. And you become more vulnerable to them. But you also become bolder. And so you begin to tell them the real about how you feel. You don't sugarcoat anymore. You start saying, girl, listen, that don't work for me. Girl, no, I'm not doing that. No, we're not doing that. And you explain to them why. And you don't feel bad about it because the relationship has grown. Yeah. And so there is a confidence that comes when the relationship is grown in a healthy way right. through listening and talking. True relationship, a great connection comes not only when we are talking to the person, right? Because you can leave from a relationship and feel unfulfilled. You look back and you say, I'm always talking. Man, I'll never say nothing, right? And so you think to yourself, this 
relationship is not adding value to me because I'm the only one sharing. I'm the only one giving. I'm the only one contributing. But when we have a relationship with God, we want him to do all the giving. We want him to do all the talking. We want him to do all the saying. But God is like, what value does this give to me if you don't pour back, if you don't say anything back, if you don't speak back to me? And so equally in the same way, God is saying our relationship has to be that with him, listening and talking. And so that's how we grow our relationship with God. And so we know the scripture tells us this in Hebrews 11 and 1, and it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. As we study our word, and we understand that God is equipping us to go through different tests and different trials. And as we focus on how do we grow our relationship with God, the, the more we grow, the stronger our relationship is, right? But it also increases our faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what is faith? Faith is the sound of truth when there is no reason to believe it, right? Faith is the sound of love when the world is spewing hate. Yeah. Faith is the door of opportunity when you're in a room with only four walls. Faith is the certainty of better when there appears to be no change in sight. Faith is the piercing light in a room full of darkness. God is saying your faith has to be that bold and that clear and that confident that even when it looks impossible, yeah. you believe anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You have confidence anyway. You can see it anyway. And so our relationship comes from listening and from talking. And so I want you to think really quickly for about a person that you love. Anybody, a person that you love. And I want you to think about maybe just this week. What made you confident in their relationship? What made you confident about the relationship with that individual that you loved? And you can think about that for a second. And so as I thought about it, I said, okay, my mom is coming. Mm-hmm. All right, I know my mom. She, every, everything I do, that little lady be here. <laughs> so I said, my mom is coming. I said, and what a great example of love, right? Mm-hmm. And so one thing that I can say, uh-oh, the little lady made me cry, okay? <laughs> one thing that I can say is my mom is so supportive. When I said, Mom, I'm going to minister the word of God. She never asked me why or why I thought I could do that. Mm -hmm. Where are you going and what time? I'll be there. Mm -hmm. And so I think about how my mom constantly displays acts of love. Mm -hmm. I never have to question if she loves me. And that doesn't mean that our relationship was always easy. You know how you a teenager and then you start thinking you're going to rebel? You just a rebel without a cause, you know, and you got an issue when you don't even need, you don't even have a reason to have an issue. So I'm not even saying that it wasn't a season when I wasn't angry with my mom, but God is so beautiful that he gave us a beautiful friendship that I can tell my mom, honestly, how I feel. She said, y'all always try to tell me something. (laughs) So I can tell my mom how I feel. And God has gave us just such a beautiful friendship, a beautiful relationship. And I don't have to know my mom's love for me based on her response to my sister. Yeah. I know her love for me based on her actions towards me. Yeah. And in God is the same way. Yeah. And if I believe that he shows us not through his interactions with other people. I believe sometimes that it's just to give us hope that he hadn't forgotten us. Yeah. But I believe that God shows you if you would just reflect mm-hmm. on his love for you and think about his acts of love towards you, then you can say for yourself, if I just recall an account when God showed up for me, when God supported me, when God made a way for me, it wasn't because of someone else's story. It was because of my own. Like I can look back over some poor decisions that I made. I can look back over some bad people I was connected to. I can look at some jobs that wasn't paying enough to pay all my bills. Yeah. But I can tell you that God provided. Yeah. I can tell you that God removed people from my yeah. life when I didn't have the strength to tell them yeah. to be gone. Yeah. I can tell you that when I felt like no one was there, somehow God gave me a peace that his arms were wrapped around me yeah. and I felt his presence and his love. And yes, sometimes it was in my bed, watching Netflix and eating popcorn. Yeah. All right, and so God is like, I've shown you for yourself who I am in your life. 
It's whether or not you choose to believe it. Yeah. Now, I don't have to talk to my mom every day. When I call her, if I don't talk to her every day, she, mommy is crying, you haven't called me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, mom, just stop it. Right? And so, if I don't talk to her every day, it doesn't change the fact that I know she loves me. Yeah. It doesn't change the fact that I know whenever I call her, she will be there for me. Yeah. And it's the same way with our relationship with God. We can call him whenever, and he will be there for us. Yeah. He's always available. He continues to act out his love for us. And so we're going to go in another scripture really quickly, and I would like to share this with you. All right. So we're going to be in 1 Samuel, and we're going to read in verse um, 1 through 10. So y'all bear with me as I read through this. All right. Scripture says this. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at the time while Eli was lying down in his place. And when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was. And while Samuel was laying down that the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. And he said, I did not call, lie down again. And he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel, here I am, for you called, I'm sorry. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again, and the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lay down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must speak, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as to other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak for your servant hears. As we talk about relationship, I said relationship is about listening and talking. And it's something so beautiful about the relationship that Samuel had. Immediately he went running, right? And I don't know about you who that person is in your life, but immediately when they call, you go running. And so here it is. Samuel said, no, I know you called me, right? First time, here I am. Second time, here I am, you called. Third time, no, hey, I know you called me, right? <laughs> and so anytime he was called, he went running. But here is Eli, and he said, if you are called again, you are supposed to say, Lord, your servant hears, right? And so I thought about that and I said, there's something about a relationship between a father and a child, a mother and a child. When that parent calls your name, you go running. Right. Scripture tells us that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And it says that the scripture and the Lord was not known widespread. And I thought about how relationship <coughs> is an intimate and personal thing. It didn't matter that the word wasn't known or God wasn't known widespread. What mattered is, can you hear him for yourself? When you have a relationship with someone, it doesn't matter what other people know about them. It doesn't matter what other people say about them. It doesn't matter what you've heard in other places. What matters is, can you hear them for yourself? And God is saying, maybe there was a time when you didn't know me, but now you know me. And when I call your name, I want to know, will you respond and get up and say, here I am, Lord, your servant hears. Mm -hmm. I just want to hear, what do I want to hear? Because I'm in a matter of building my relationship. Sometimes I understand that it grows stale. And sometimes I understand that I've been distant and I've been far off. But when I understand that and you call me back unto you again, then I understand when you call my name, then I'm trying to get close to you again. 
try to get connected to you again. As you said, I'm trying to make sure that I make time for you in my life, that I consider you with my decisions, big and small. And so here it is. Samuel is saying, Lord, I'm ready. Whatever it is you desire of me, right? But the Lord spoke some important things into Samuel. Here is Samuel. He's got to speak to Israel. Now, they don't want to hear what he got to say to them, neither here nor there, right? <laughs> but you got to be able to hear what God is trying to tell you yeah. so that when he sends you out on assignment or when he sends you on a mission, you're able to speak clearly for what it is that God is telling you to do. See, here it is. Samuel was dedicated by his mom, Hannah, before he was even born. When she was praying, she said, Lord, if you give me this man child, then I will dedicate him unto you. And she only visited Samuel occasionally. But he didn't even have a, he didn't even have a knowledge of who God really was at the time. So here it is before, when we were created in our mother's womb, God knew us. He created us and called us for his service and called us for his work. And he understood there were going to be some seasons and some times. Like Samuel, we don't know who he is. Yeah, yeah. See, if you've been far removed, people change and things change. God is unchanging. So the capacity and the level in which you know God is going to be different, yeah. right? Because you've been far. Mm -hmm. You've been doing some things you didn't yeah. have no business mm -hmm. doing. Yeah. The word don't penetrate your heart the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the only way for you to be able to get close to God is to have that same childlike energy and that same childlike response. Lord, when you call me, Lord, I hear you. Your servant hears. And not only do I hear, but I'm ready to go out and yeah. do whatever it is that you called me to yeah. do. And so when we're talking and when we're listening, what is the position that I have when God is speaking to me? What is the position and the posture that I have when God is telling me something that I don't want to hear? Yeah. What is the position and the posture of my heart when God is saying, I don't have that for you yet? I'm going to let you see some other people have it. But I want to know, will yeah. you still praise mm. and will you still pray? Yeah. I want to know, will you still talk to me the same if it hasn't manifested in your life just yet? There's something beautiful about relationship. And when you're truly connected for, to someone, you can delight in the things that they're delighted in. You can be happy and applaud the things that they applaud. And that's what God is saying when you're in real good relationship with me. Regardless of what's going on in your life, you see the things I'm doing in the earth. And you can praise those things. You can see the things that are troubling me in the earth, and those things will trouble you also. Uh -huh. Some people ask me and my sister, because we're twins, and they often say, can y'all feel what each other feel? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> y'all see that stuff on TV? That ain't us. I said, but anyway, if she cries, you'll see me cry. Yeah. If she's happy, you'll see me happy. Yeah. It's something beautiful about relationship. And so the same way that God feels about certain things, and he sees things, and it affects him the same way it should be for us. But really, where are we in our relationship? Have we been talking, and have we been listening? Have we truly been studying, and have we been praying? And I'm not talking about what the world has to say about our relationship with God. I'm not talking about what other people say widespread. You got to do it this way. You got to talk this way. Yeah. You got to go to church this many a times. God will put a conviction in you. Mm -hmm. And you will know exactly where you're supposed yeah. to be. Amen. When you're yeah. supposed to be there. Yeah. And God will continue to reveal that to you. Yeah. So as we grow in the word of God. And as we're growing in relationship. Really God is saying. Have you been studying? Yeah. What is it that you're doing to grow? Yeah. And how confidently do you currently stand in your faith? Okay. I don't know if that word is for you. But if it wasn't for you, God said, I'm going to speak to you like Samuel. And I expect you to go out and tell somebody else yeah. who it does apply to. Right. Maybe it's not for you today. But you have someone that's been crying to you on your phone. Yeah. And you know that they're far from God. Right. And no, it's not beating them over the head. Yeah. But it's finding a way to share in love that's and to right. share in compassion. Amen. What is it that I want to do to connect with you, to relate you, to get you back to the Father? See, we're all on assignment. We have a mission and God has called each of us to do it. Whether that be what you speak into your children, whether that be what you speak into the people on your job, we always have to live by example. So what is the example that you put forth before the earth? What is it that you're showing up? How is it that you're showing up in the places that God has called you to? And so I really wanna know, when God says, have you made time for me in your life? Have you really made time for him? Have you really thought about, have I talked to God today? Have I really asked you, Lord, how do you feel about the things I'm doing? How do you feel about the decisions that I'm making? How do you feel about the people that I'm connected yeah. to? Right? 
There are some people that we want to save, but God didn't tell you to go be somebody's savior. Come on. Come on. There are some people that you want to go and help, but God didn't necessarily tell you to go and help them. So what ends up happening? You end up being broken as a result of it. Right. You end up having resentment as a result of it. Right. You end up prolonging where God wants you to be because you hung up and stuck mm -hmm. in areas and places that God never wanted you to be. Yeah. There is something about relationship that's very clear. And so my mom once gave this example, and she said, I know when we were younger, my sister and I, this funny thing about twins, we would often get together, go play, and then go do stuff we never supposed to do. And, and put my mom through, I would only imagine what it was like to raise two little twin babies. And so she tells the story about how we were living in an apartment and there was a gate on the patio. And somehow, somehow, these two little twins snuck under the gate and went out playing with the kids in the community. And so eventually my mom took a nap. I was tired as I would imagine with two little babies. And somebody came and knocked on the door. And when they came and knocked on the door, they said, we're bringing your babies back to you. And so my mom said, she just was so done, she didn't even know what to do, whether to be mad, whether to whoop us, what to do. She was just so upset. But here's the beauty of it. I said, in relationship, we knew we didn't have any business going out there. We knew we wasn't supposed to be going out there. But like God, he'll always find a way to bring you back. And so I said, when, yeah. And so, so I said, God, thank you for the example that we know what you expect of us, whether we choose to do it or not. You know, we all fall off sometimes. That doesn't mean God loves you any less. My mom didn't beat us. Well, she probably did. She didn't tell us. But my mom didn't say, I don't love you anymore. She didn't say y'all not welcome here yeah. she embraced us with open arms yeah. when they brought us back and that's something that God does every single time oh, there yeah. are times and seasons in life when we go off and we go yeah. do our own things mm -hmm. but God is saying yeah. with loving arms I'll draw you unto yeah. me yeah. all right and so there's something beautiful about growing about studying and about standing confidently in God's word mm -hmm. all right that's all I have Thank Amen. You. Um, 